BBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And the first thing I would like to say is we will be talking about the Zodiac Killer and Robert Greysmith tonight. But this was a suggestion that came in from somebody in the comments section. Someone sent me a copy of the documentary. Robert Graysmith Unmasked, or Graysmith Unmasked, and we're going to be doing a discussion on that one. If you have any other suggestions for topics, any ideas or theories that you want discussed here on the channel, please feel free to drop some in the comments section below. This week on the channel, we're going to be going through some things about serial killers, and after that, we're going to try to get to your suggestions that you guys have been putting in. So, a lot of things coming out on Black Box Online Radio, and if you haven't subscribed yet, now is a very good time to subscribe. Okay, so getting into our discussion today, yes indeed, there's a documentary out there called Graysmith Unmasked, and even if you haven't watched that, it is available here on YouTube for free. It's arranged in segments, though. What was it? Um, Six or seven different segments, I guess, put up, you know, in parts, but you can watch the full thing here on YouTube for free, even if you haven't seen it. Feel free to keep listening because we're just having a discussion about the Zodiac Killer and about Robert Graysmith. Now, in this one, they are taking a couple bold stances, and it's really not until the fourth part of the documentary that it really begins to heat up. And they are actually just saying, all right, here are some major problems with Robert Graysmith and his books Zodiac and Zodiac Unmasked. And what they're really trying to say is Graysmith put out several pieces of fraudulent information to the general public, and he reiterated them for years. I mean, even more than several, just endless pieces. And we've mentioned a few things before on the channel, and we even did a book discussion on the Great Zodiac Killer Hoax of 1986, which lays out the thesis statement that what Robert Graysmith would do is he had access to the police reports, and what he would do is he would take a sentence, half of it would be true, and then half of it would be false. And even another example that they mentioned in Graysmith Unmasked was one we haven't talked about before on the channel. There was an individual named William Joseph Grant that Graysmith gave the pseudonym to Andrew Todd Walker. And he would take some things about William Joseph Grant, as well as about another individual that was harassing Darlene Farron at the restaurant in which she worked. His name was George Waters. And he'll take some info about William Joseph Grant, some info about George Waters, and then put them together and make people think that it's the same person. So he has a few sneaky things that he has been doing to spread some inaccurate information to the general public. In Graysmith is featured at length in the um, documentary, many video segments that he has done, many interclips, like clips from the interviews about Robert Graysmith are featured in this documentary. But to tackle some of the allegations, Graysmith's claim to fame is there were these police departments in California. You, of course, have San Francisco, Vallejo, Napa County. And he says they're different departments, but they weren't working together. So some guy like Graysmith, a private citizen, got access to the police reports and is like, hey, let's see if we can find some links that are going on. And then that started his research into the Zodiac Killer mystery, starting the book Zodiac in 1972. And he originally tried to put this out in 1981 under the title, This is the Zodiac Speaking. And then that was pulled by the publisher, W.W. Norton, at the last minute. And we're still not even sure why. Thomas Henry Warren has a few things to say about that. And when I asked him that question, like, what what do you think would be the cause of that? Why would they pull his book? This is the Zodiac speaking at the last minute. And he said, perhaps something to the effect of uh, somebody realized that the book was phony baloney, that it contained some fraudulent information. Maybe someone was reviewing the police reports and they were like, hey, now, wait a second. These things are not matching up, or perhaps, as we said, half a sentence is true and half a sentence is false, or that this information is actually talking about somebody else, and you're trying to make it think that it is all connected to one person when it is not. Many different things, but yes, it's still the same basic premise. There are pieces of the information that are true and pieces that are false. But why? Here's a more plausible thing, or man, I shouldn't say more plausible, because I don't know 100% what happened. But here is another reason why Graysmith could have fabricated anything 
in the Zodiac Killer mystery, because it doesn't simply have to be that there's some type of malicious counter-conspiracy going on. Perhaps he just wanted to sell more books. Perhaps one of the reasons why W.W. W. Norton pulled the book in 1981 was that they thought it was too technical, they thought it was too ordinary, so then he decided to jazz it up for the 1986 book, Zodiac, because in 1981, the original suspect was that person we mentioned, Andrew Todd Walker, William Joseph Grant. It's rather interesting to hear about how um, these names get attributed to these individuals, like Walker, because he was a stalker. Walker the stalker. That's the way they wanted to uh, present him. And I mentioned that there are a lot of stories about people harassing Darlene Farron. And the first three parts of this documentary, we're talking all about Pam Huckabee, the sister of Darlene Farron, who was just on videotape, they're showing how she's just saying different things. And to the credit of the television host, Sally uh, Raphael, the, you might remember the show Sally, daytime talk show. She even asked somebody, it's like, do you think that Pam Huckabee is saying these inconsistent statements simply because she couldn't accept the loss of her sister, that her sister was murdered? And that's why she's putting out disinfo to the general public. But yes, Pam Huckabee was unreliable. She said so many things about different people were harassing Darlene Farron at the restaurant, even at one time pointing to a photo of Lawrence Kane. And the individual, as we mentioned, um, I finally got his last name. It just I don't know why I could I would always forget George Waters. But I believe that I had read once that he was a Filipino American. But in this documentary, um, Grace Smith Unmasked, they were showing that um the the uh, photos of George Waters, he doesn't appear to have any Asiatic features, but anyway, he is supposedly the man who was harassing Darlene Farron at her restaurant, not even a Zodiac killer suspect. And perhaps that's one reason why certain pieces of info were taken from George Waters and then connected on to other uh, individuals trying to make a bigger story. Another allegation that is put forward in the film is that there was a novel that came out in 1979 called The Zodiac Killer. And it is a novel. It is inspired by certain true events. There are actually a variety of novels that have been made about the uh, Zodiac Killer. I was even just looking for Zodiac books once, and I encountered this one thing about the Zodiac murders, and it was done in, like, according to the star signs, like Gemini, Virgo, Aquarius, and um, the, it's like uh, there might even be 12 books in that series, but that's just it's a novel that has some inspirations from the Zodiac Killer. And another accusation that is made in the film is that Robert Graysmith would have read that novel and added in certain elements of pure fiction into his books, Zodiac and Zodiac Unmasked. But, um, I mean, like, if you're going to talk about how Robert Graysmith is fabricating evidence, we talked about one possibility, that he could just be trying to sell more books. He could just be trying to write a quote-unquote more entertaining story. I mean, that could that could just be it. Full stop. And I still stand by my claim that Robert Graysmith changed his name in 1976 from Robert Smith to Robert Graysmith. Gray was his middle name, R.G. Smith Jr., R.G. Smith II. I still stand by my claim that he changed his name in 1976 because he didn't want to put Robert Smith on a book. Gray Smith sounds like a cooler name, so he did that, and then he jazzed up the story. He tried to beef up the story in a fictitious way, which is immoral and unethical, and there's no justification for doing that in a true crime book to put out blatant falsehoods. But it's highly possible that these quote-unquote blatant falsehoods that people are mentioning are simply that someone was trying to write a best-selling book as opposed to one that people would have just forgotten about. Now, the alternative is that Robert Graysmith was an active participant in the murders. That, of course, comes to us from Thomas Henry Horn, author of The Great Zodiac Killer Hoax of 1986-69, The Myth of the Zodiac Killer, even saying that Graysmith was the author of the ciphers, not the letters, and not committing the murders, but he was the author of the ciphers. As we said, The Great Zodiac Killer Hoax, meaning that one person was writing the letters, taking credit for murders he did not commit. His name was Hal Snook, and that Hal Snook was Robert Graysmith's mentor, and Graysmith would have composed the ciphers. Graysmith was indeed a cartoonist, so he would have really been able to compose very well-done ciphers. And actually, when you see that very famous illustration of the Zodiac Killer at Lake Berryessa wearing the hood and holding the gun, 
I'm, I'm sure you've probably seen it at some point. That is a Robert Graysmith original. So these are the things that we're dealing with when it comes to Robert Graysmith. He's accused of fabricating evidence. And I would like to give a big shout out to uh, somebody who uh, left a comment. I don't have it in front of me or else I'd uh, give you a shout out by name. But they um, just gave a little bit of a response to uh, Thomas Henry Horan about how excessive he can be trying to expose Graysmith as a fraud, saying that Graysmith lied and Graysmith fabricated. Even the spaces in between the words are lies. I'm going to pour Robert Graysmith some water because he must be parched from telling all the lies. I mean, excellent comment that somebody left. And I mean, the great Zodiac Killer hoax, if you ever got a chance to read that, it is hard, especially the great Zodiac Killer hoax of 1986, because after a hundred pages, Gray Smith lied. Gray Smith fabricated. Gray Smith lied. Gray Smith fabricated. It's the same words over and over again. And then it's um not only that it's just simply that he misrepresented the evidence, also saying that he was an active participant. But Horan is very precise when he says that he 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 claims he has proof that Hal Snook wrote the letters, but that is still disputed. However, he cannot prove. I re I repeat cannot prove that Robert Graysmith was an active participant in anything to do with the Zodiac other than having access to the police reports and getting fluffy on the details. You know, and it's like, one of the reasons is Arthur Lee Allen becomes Graysmith's prime suspect. Robert Hall star. After Andrew Todd Walker is no longer a suspect in the uh, book Zodiac, he's now on to Arthur Lee Allen. And they talked about this in the uh, documentary Graysmith Unmasked, really trying to say that many people, and publications even, say that Graysmith solved the mystery. They say that Robert Graysmith cracked the case, and everything he says about Arthur Lee Allen is true. Like, he got to the bottom of it. Well, they were putting that stuff out, and then DNA evidence exonerated Arthur Lee Allen. Though there's a very famous thing that I've quoted many times. I read this in an interview with Tom Voigt, like the transcript of the interview, when Tom Voigt said that the DNA that they had on file for the Zodiac was touch DNA from around the stamp. And, you know, Tom Voigt is a questionable figure in his own right, but it's like, in this documentary, they're showing the news reports and they're talking to the uh, scientists and they're saying that with confirmation that, yes, indeed, that's what they have. Touch DNA from the stamp, like a fingerprint DNA from the stamp that was put on the um, envelope that was mailed in with the Zodiac letters. So that is a little bit less value because one of the famous things that they put out in the documentaries was that Back in the day, people had to lick the stamps and put them on. We don't have to do that anymore. And also, they had to lick the envelope to seal it, which we still do. So then they were like, they could get saliva DNA from the Zodiac Killer. Touch DNA means that anybody who would have touched the stamp, I mean, that's a little bit... uh a little bit less uh, valuable. But does that mean that Arthur Lee Allen was not the Zodiac Killer? Or does that mean that Arthur Lee Allen could still possibly be the Zodiac Killer? Well, we also have a lot of forensic evidence from the letters themselves. And they were showing how they did this with the exorcist letter, saying that um, it's not only the palm print, but the side palm print. Like, even if the fingertips aren't touching the paper, the side palm print would be pressed against the paper as the person was writing. That technology did not exist in 1968 and 69. So, or to really get very accurate readings... They've compared other letters that Arthur Lee Allen has written, and he also appears to have been exonerated from that. Unless we were going to go down the Arthur Lee Allen's partner route, but um, to digress from that from now, it really doesn't look like the case that Graysmith built against Arthur Lee Allen was very strong. Number one, because Graysmith is being inaccurate with things, and some of the examples of places where they say that he is misrepresenting the truth. We talked about um, Andrew Todd Walker and George Waters, but also saying that there was an argument with Darlene Farron in the parking lot at 10.30 p.m. on the night she was murdered, the parking lot of Terry's Restaurant, I should say. And then it turns out the argument actually happened at 10.30 a.m. in that parking lot, and Darlene Farron wasn't even present. And another one was that once they got to the... Uh, 
to Blue Rock Springs Park. First, Graysmith said it happened at Blue Rock Springs Golf Course. Then he had to retract that and say it happened at Blue Rock Springs Park. We're talking about the shooting of Darlene Farron and Mike Michaud on July 4th of 1969. With that one, they are then saying that um, there was a woman that came out and talked to Darlene Farron, who was the daughter of the caretaker. And, um, oh, what was the guy's name? Bryant, her the uh, witness that heard the gunshots was named George Bryant. And apparently Graysmith said that Bryant's sister, once again, Bryant would be the son of the caretaker, that uh, she talked to Darlene Farron before she was shot. The guy didn't even have a daughter. The caretaker didn't have a daughter. George Bryant didn't have a sister. So um, that was another thing that was shared. Graysmith, once again, provided some information that was not correct. And I mean, why did he do that? I think only he knows. But I mean, it's impressive to see that they have gone back and tried to fact check him. And a lot of the stuff that they're putting out on shows like America's Most Wanted or perhaps mainstream media coverage was simply just not trying to investigate the claims that Gray Smith was making in his book, but rather accepting them as, as fact without verifying them. Now, as far as the solutions to the ciphers that have been provided, the 408 cipher has been mostly cracked, except for a final line at the bottom of letters that is all pushed together. And one of the possible solutions to that that Graysmith has proposed is that it spells out Robert Emmett the Hippie. And in Zodiac Unmasked, and we did a discussion about that book on this channel here, Graysmith has a conversation with Paul Avery in the 1980s. And Graysmith asked Paul Avery, according to his book, what do you think that final line of cipher of, of the 408 cipher means? And, he, and Avery allegedly says, I still think it says Robert Emmett. So there's that. But the thing is, that's unconfirmed. Like, if you look at the 408 cipher, you'll see a mash of letters at the bottom. E, B, E, O, R, something to that effect. And um, Thomas Horan says that you can make it, say, Robert Smith, if you arrange certain things. I'm not convinced of that at all. I think the more interesting thing is not so much about the content of the 408 cipher, but the fact that the final line remained uncoded. That's number one. The final Zodiac cipher, the 340, also remained uncoded, meaning that the Zodiac killer would leave either extremely careful and well-composed elements in the ciphers, or the Zodiac Killer was intentionally putting out things that could never be deciphered. And Robert Emmett, who's Robert Emmett? There's a statue of Robert Emmett in Golden Gate Park. There is an individual that goes on to become Robert, or he goes on to be a Zodiac suspect named Robert Emmett Rodifer. Robert Emmett was also the diving coach of Arthur Lee Allen comes up a lot. Very common name, but this Emmett is spelled E-M-E-T, mind you. And the thing to say about that is, I think that this shows a real pattern in Zodiac's work, let alone that the Z-13 has also not been uh, solved to everybody's satisfaction. So I think that the Zodiac has a habit of, once you crack the cipher, there's still a little bit that you will never solve, because there really is just no meaning. And that once you get to the some, something like the 340, it's possible that there is uh, the words by, by rope, by knife, by gun, by fire, slaves, paradise can't be found in the, in the 340. That's a possible solution, but it's just possible. And I still think that there is a certain sense of value in looking at this and just being like the Zodiac wants to give people just a little bit of information and then be like, oh, wait but you'll never solve the puzzle completely. And to the, in all seriousness, in all fairness, no, we have not solved the Zodiac Killer mystery in its entirety. And this is the reason why this case is so appealing to many people, because first, you want to know who was the Zodiac Killer, who was he, and why did he commit these murders, other than typical serial killer reasons. But also, people like Robert Graysmith become players in this themselves. And then it's like, what was his motivation? Why did he do the things that he did? How did Graysmith 
make mistakes or how did he lie or how did he fabricate any of the evidence, those accusations against him. The writers and the researchers also get involved with this and people like Dave Toskey get accused of fabricating evidence like writing a letter claiming it's the Zodiac when really it's Toskey and that becomes a whole mystery in itself. So I would say that... um I'd say that there's, there's just so many elements in this case, you can always find a new way of examining it. Because it, it's not only about the Zodiac anymore, and it's also about the people who are involved with the search. Okay, well, that's all for me now. If you do want to see the uh, Zodiac Killer documentary, Graysmith Unmasked, it, is been, it has been put out by Michael Butterfield, I should say that one. And I'm only saying that because Butterfield is featured extensively in the documentary, and they're hailing him as the Zodiac expert, which would be fine, except for the fact that he wrote and directed the thing. So it's like Zodiac expert, you, meaning that he's the expert. And they're showing Tom Voigt, and they're showing Graysmith, and they're like, these guys, bad, me, good. A um, little bit too, uh, too much flash in that one, to be honest. But I digress from that. I would love to hear anything that you would have to say at all about Robert Graysmith. And the, please drop something in the comments section below. Or what do you have to say about the Zodiac ciphers and their solutions? That's all for me now. Until next time.